Well, <clears throat> about a little over a year ago now, I did a video on this lovely little model steam engine, uh, which is the Albury Manor Mark IV. Now, uh, it's a rather unassuming little steam engine. I find it fascinating because of the story behind it and the fact that it was produced in an English school from something like the mid 1960s all the way through until uh, late 1970s. And it was designed by a chap who went by the name of Geoffrey Weller. Now, he was a handicraft teacher at the Albury Manor School from, I think, something like the mid 1950s. And he came up with this idea as a project for his school pupils to build, which I think is truly brilliant because first of all, it's interesting, um, you know, to actually build something that, that hopefully will run and work after you've manufactured it. But it also teaches multiple skills to the pupils whilst, you know, maintaining their interest and hopefully their enthusiasm. Now, sometime in the mid to late 1960s, uh, Mr. Weller, he moved schools. He moved houses and he, and he moved schools. And he became the head handicraft teacher in the Court Lodge School, where he continued to get his pupils to build the lovely Aubrey Manor Mark IV. Now, during the, 19, the early 1970s, apparently the cost of producing this engine had risen to the point where it was becoming too expensive for them to, ma to make these things. So he was asked to redesign it using uh, fewer materials so that it would be obviously a lot cheaper to manufacture. And this, in fact, was exactly what he did. He came up with the Court Lodge Mark I. And I finally, after over a year, I managed to track down one on eBay and win the auction for it. So I now have the Aubrey Manor Mark IV and the Court Lodge Mark I. Now straight away, you can see that the Court Lodge Mark I is significantly smaller than the Aubrey Manor engine. Um, he scaled it right down. And you can, you can really see this. I mean, if we have a look, let's close in a little bit of the two of them. Um, particularly on the uh, cylinder flywheel, right? The flywheel is considerably smaller. The crank's the same, roughly the same size, but the cylinder and piston are, are very much smaller on the Court Lodge model. The boiler is significantly smaller, probably a third smaller, and the shields have gone around the boiler, they're no longer there. And obviously the base, as you can easily see, is considerably smaller so that uses a lot less aluminium to cast the base but the, the the basics of the design is exactly the same it's just been shrunk down um, and they've also they've got rid of the a number of individual fixings there are several screws that hold the albury mano engine together there's just one screw that goes up through the base that holds the boiler to the firebox so let's have a proper close look at the court lodge mark one now, I haven't done anything with this engine. I've literally unpacked it, only arrived this morning. And this is exactly as I got it out of the box. And as you can see, it's, it's in pretty good condition. It's pretty filthy. It needs a damn good clean. And obviously it would be nice to polish up all the brass parts, but the, the, the basics of the engine are all there. The only thing that appears to be missing is the burner. And I'll need to look online, see if I can find some pictures, because obviously it's a single tube burner that goes in there, hence just the one hole in the front of the firebox. Yeah, I'm really, really pleased to get this. And and as I said before, when I did the video on the Albury Manor engine, to me, these engines are fascinating because of their history and because of the fact that they were individually made by different pupils throughout, probably covering, um, well, the, the Albury Manor Mark IV, there was a Mark I engine of that ilk. So it went back probably to the the late 1950s so from the late 1950s all the way through until the mid 70s there were there was two schools 
over that period of time that were producing these, the pupils were producing these engines. And I, I think that's brilliant because I mean, it's such a, a fantastic idea. You know, I mean, there's no way that would happen nowadays because obviously it's far too dangerous to teach children anything about engineering. We can't possibly have that. They might hurt themselves, the poor things. So therefore, this is, this is a significant event in the education system in this country, in my opinion. And this guy, Jeffrey Weller, was just brilliant. I mean, there should be, I wish there'd been more, more teachers like him because this is just, I think, fantastic. So that's just a quick first look and a comparison with the Aubrey Manor engine. What I will do now is strip this down, clean it up, see if I can find some pictures of a burner so I can fabricate a burner for it. And then we can get this one running. Um, I may even run both of them together. That would be fantastic. I, I do, these things are just fantastic. I, I love these engines, as you probably gather. So, right, let's get on and get it stripped down and cleaned up. Well, here is the Court Lodge Mark One, fully disassembled, ready for cleanup. It won't require any repainting. It just needs basically cleaning, reassembling, and then uh, we should be able to steam it. Now, I'm going to make a bit of a shout out here to uh, a chap called Rolly Williams, who has a website and a YouTube channel. I'll put links in the description to both of those. He is a fantastic model steam engine collector, and he's got some wonderful, wonderful models. The information I have on the Court Lodge and the Albury Manor engines comes from his website. So I've got a big thanks to him for actually providing that information. The engines continue to be manufactured at Court Lodge. Uh, into the 1980s. Jeffrey Weller retired in the early 1980s and his job was taken over by a chap called Roger Williamson who was a former pupil of his and also a good friend and he continued to supervise the manufacture of these engines into the 1980s. Now I'm fairly certain that the last ones would have been produced probably towards the end of the 1980s so this could be you know it could be one of the new ones it could have been one of the old ones you just don't know but Anyway, I'm going to get on and clean it all up, put it back together, and hopefully we'll get it running. Well, here's the Court Lodge Mark 1, all cleaned up. And it's, it's come up very nicely. One point of interest, there was no soot on the bottom of the boiler. There was indications on the boiler that it had definitely been steamed in the past, but normally with older engines that have been used, you normally get a horrible gooey or even just black soot on the bottom of the engine, on the bottom of the boiler, and it's had none. So I don't, I don't know whether it's not been steamed for a very long time, and the last time it was steamed, it was cleaned up. <laughs> I, I don't know. But it, it, it clean, cleaned up really nicely. All I did with the base was just a bit of Windex, give it a wash over with that, and it cleaned all the grime off, and it's it come up really well. So yeah, there you go. There it is. So the question is, will it steam? Well. I did have an air adapter for the safety valve, so I have run it on air and it runs perfectly fine on air. So fingers crossed, it will steam okay. Now, obviously I need to make a burner for it, but being the sort of impatient person that I am, <laughs> uh, I, I'm going to use uh, one of these uh, for the burner. Now this is very similar to the actual burner that was made for the Court Lodge Mark One. That is actually, from a Luton Bowman engine. So, but it but it goes in, it fits nicely. There we go. So that will do as our burner for our test steaming. Right, let's get on with it. Well, this is my second attempt to steam the Court Lodge Mark One. First time I didn't realize that the safety valve was missing the middle piece. So we've now got the, we've got the Aubrey Manor safety valve in there. Hopefully that'll do the job nicely. It does seem to be leaking a bit of steam from the, where the uh, cylinder joins the, is attached to the uh, actual engine mount. I'm not sure how much that's gonna affect it. Knees lapping in, really. Well, there we go. The Court Lodge Mark I under steam. Look at that. Running like a trooper. Oh, well, please with that. Oh, 
as I said obviously it really does need its own boiler but I, uh, and I will get around to manufacturing one of those at some point in the not too distant future but for now it's running quite happily on the Luton Bowman burner So, I'm not sure who made this. There is a very faint name penciled onto the base, but it's almost impossible to read. So, but it was obviously a pupil at the Court Lodge School at some point in its history. Runs very well, very well indeed. Yeah, I'm very pleased to have this. As I said, I, I find these engines fascinating with their history and the fact that they were made by school pupils. So, you know, they're all well, it's focusing, <laughs> focusing on the steam and not the, um, not the steam engine. There we go. What a lovely engine. And as I said, it's part of the uh, educational history of this country. It's fantastic. Okay, there we go. The Court Lodge Mark I could have been made any time between, you know, probably the mid 70s and the mid 80s. But it's a very, very nice example. And I'm very pleased to have it in my collection. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. Cheers.